Hello, I'm going to make a dice tower and you can watch. This was my very first effort in making a dice tower and it's totally prototype level. By the time I was done, I'd worked out a whole bunch of stuff that I did wrong and that I would correct in future efforts. I actually had a couple ideas for far more complicated dice towers in my head when I made this thing, but I wanted to try this first because it was much simpler and if I screwed up it wouldn't be as big of a deal. This is the sort of dice tower that basically is a self-contained box. It's got a lid that you remove, but then you set the tower into the box on its end so that the box's lid becomes the catch area at the bottom. I'd seen several variations on this idea on other places and wanted to take a crack at designing one for myself using my laser cutter. I do my vector work in Adobe Illustrator. When I do these sawtooth style boxes, I do them manually, though I don't usually reinvent the wheel each time like I am here. I went ahead and did the toothed edges from scratch on this one just to demonstrate how I do it, though now that I've got it sped up to 20 times speed, I doubt it's really worth the effort. In any case, since it's a pretty straightforward box design, there's not much to it aside from getting the dimensions right. Leaving a hole at the top and at the base of the front, and then also making the lid the proper size so that the main tower will fit inside of it. Once the design is done, I export it to the laser cutter software, put the wood in place, check the border, and start the cutting. After cutting, while removing the wood from the laser cutter, I discovered that the plywood had a knot on the innermost layer, and it had blocked the laser in a small area. I hate it when that happens, it's very annoying. I had to go in and cut it with an X-Acto knife. Now not all of the pieces fit onto one sheet of wood, so I had to cut a few extra bits from another sheet of scrap. Then it's off to sanding with the radial sander. Since this entire thing was a first pass test, I wasn't sure it would fit together at all. So I did this test fitting first without any glue and holding it all together with rubber bands. Test fitting shows that I had gotten all of the dimensions right and that was a relief. However, it also showed to me that I hadn't thought the zigzag inner platforms through enough. Since the whole piece slides in and out, they slide out very easily and it was very annoying during the assembly process. So once I was sure it would fit together, I took it apart and started the process of finishing it with polyurethane. Now some would wonder why I would apply the polyurethane before assembling the box as you generally see people waiting until it's all put together before staining and finishing. To get the smoothest finish with only two coats of poly, each side needs to dry laying perfectly flat. That means I'd have to coat each side with poly one at a time, let it dry, move on to the next, coat that, let that dry, move on to the next. This takes lots of extra time. If I don't do it one side at a time, I run a greater risk of getting drips or pooling along the bottom edges of things. After the second sanding pass, the coat of polyurethane that's over it is even smoother. And this is usually sufficient to get the shine that I'm after. If the second coat isn't sufficient, or if there are problems like with glue smudging that happen while I'm assembling it, then I do sometimes put on a third coat of poly, and I'll do that after assembly. But I like to avoid doing this because it does add extra time, and once it's assembled I do have to do that whole one side at a time thing to avoid the dripping. I assemble the box with normal wood glue, I apply the glue with a little toothpick between all of the notches, and I hold it together with clamps and rubber bands. And finally, I'm done. I learned a lot from the process of this one, and I have already applied it to other projects. In fact, I've got another uh, dice tower that I made that's got this very cool elven design. It's one of the ones that I had in mind that made me decide to do this in the first place. So I'm gonna post that one up too. I've also already modified the design file for this box, so that the next time I make it, it's going to be better and won't have as many weird little hiccups along the way that this one had. As far as making another one of these, I could also easily fancy it up with little designs, just uh, the kind that are etched into the side to make it look cooler. Overall, for working from scratch and just kind of making it up as I went, I think it turned out pretty good. I like the shine, the finish was real nice, and it was successful. It fits, it's good, I'm happy, and I'm done. Hope you enjoyed watching me make this. Uh, if you want to see me make more of them, you can subscribe. If you like the video, do the little thumbs up -y thing. And I think we're done. We're good. All right.
Bye-bye.